Okay, guys. So we've got these. Who remembers what these are called? Base 10 blocks. Okay. So um, you can either put in chat or raise your hand or try and let us know, and we will see if we can call on you and unmute you. But what is the relationship of this one to this one? To go from this one to this one, what can I say? I see Michaela. Yeah, it's times 10 or 10 times greater, 10 times larger. Okay, what if I were to go the opposite direction? I started with this and I go to this. What would I say about that one? Yeah, if um, Kate and Connor, you guys are correct. It is one tenth of. So we're starting with this and we cut it into 10 pieces and we get left with 10 of these. One of them is one tenth of it. Okay, so that's, that's a pretty good review. But now let's start talking about what we're doing today. And if you guys can't read some of this on the board, don't worry, we're gonna keep going over it um, until you guys memorize it. But I tried to make it as big as possible for you. But our, our objective or our goal today is I can find place value of whole numbers. So not just place value in the sense of, oh, what place value is it in, but what is the value of this number? What is the amount that this represents? So I've created a place value chart here, and up top I have what's called the periods. Then I have the place value, then the number, the expanded form, and then the actual value. So if you guys have ever counted, you've already come across periods before, you just didn't necessarily know what they were called. So every set of three place values equals one period. So we start with ones, tens, hundreds. That's going to be our ones period. Then the next one is we have ones, tens, hundreds. That's our thousands period. And then after that, we get into ones, tens, hundreds, and our millions period. The idea being 1,000, right? 2,000. So that's the way I read a number, is I find the number, I go to its place value and its period, 1,000, done. So I'm going to explain a little more what the rest of this stuff is, but you want to be able to identify that every time you have a ones, a tens, and a hundreds, you've completed a period. Now, if you notice, I only stopped at the one millions because in my life, um, that's actually way bigger than anything I've ever seen. Um, I, I don't ever need to go past the millions. I am a teacher. I am not looking at my bank account being like two million point, you know, 2.5 million, 2.6. Yeah, I don't have that much money. Um, I don't even have that much debt or anything like that. I, I don't, like millions is as far as most people need to go. Um, unless you're like T-Pain or something like that and you have a lot more. Or um, who's a famous musician right now? I can't even think. If you're Lady Gaga, you know past the millions. Um, we'll go with that, right? I don't need to know that. So I'm going to look at a zero in my ones. How many ones does that mean I have? If I have a zero in the ones place, how many ones does that mean I have? Yeah, it means I have zero, right? Zero. Same thing with the tens. Any number that has a zero in it means I have zero of that. So its expanded form is the th same as saying zero times one. So it's zero, the number, times its place value, and we all know anything times zero is zero. So that would be called its expanded form. And its value, meaning how much is this, is this number worth, is zero. Now we move to the tens. We have a zero in the tens. I'm gonna use that same knowledge that Kate and Connor said already, that my ten, zero in the tens place means that I have zero tens. So I'm gonna take zero times 10, which is the place value, to get a value of zero. I'm gonna replicate the same process 
I have a zero in the hundreds. So zero times 100, which is the place value, gives me a value of zero. Now this is where it gets a little bit different. We now have a number that is not zero in the 1000s place value. So we have a two there. How many thousands does that mean I have? I show a phalanges. Remember, phalanges are fingers. Show a phalanges are put in chat. How many thousands does that say, mean I have? Yeah, if you guys are saying two in the chat or holding up two phalanges, you are accurate. So our expanded form looks like the value, the number we have times its place value, which would give us a value of 2,000. Let's look at our 10,000s place value. And this is, where, this is where also it gets a little tricky. A lot of times I see students, oh, it's in the ones place value. So you want to multiply it by one? No, it is in the 1,000s place value. So be careful with that. That's going to be where you might make a, an easy, simple mistake. So a nine in the 10,000s place value. What do I need to multiply that by to get the value of that? What do you guys think? What do I need to multiply that nine by to get the value of that number? Alan, if you said 10,000, you are totally correct. You are multiplying that number by its place value. So nine times 10,000 to give me 90,000. Next one, hopefully you guys are starting to see this pattern. We take a three as our number. We multiply that three by its place value, which is 100,000 to give us a value of 300,000. Moving on to our millions, we have a one in the millions place value. So we take that number, multiply it by its place value to get one million. Now, who can tell me, if you're in chat, you're going to have to type it out, which actually will help in a second. Who can tell me what that full number is? Who can read me that number? Not everybody, not all of you at once. Don't overwhelm me. Uh, I see a bunch of you guys are typing. I see Raiden. What do you got, Raiden? Say the whole thing. Is... Yep, read me the number. Okay. 1,300,000, 90,000, 2,000, then that. You are on yeah. the right track. You are on the right uh, track. Reading numbers gets a little bit, can get a little bit complicated. So. Oh, yeah. Now I know. What do you got? 1,392,000. Perfect, perfect. Um, do not let all this other junk mess you up when you're thinking of that. So um, very easy to happen, especially when you see some of the problems um, that the book would want you to do. So whenever you read a number, you look at the place value chart, and you have this one built in your head. Um, so you go one, and then the place value, one million, which is the period, sorry, you go one, when you hit the end of the period, you say the period name. So 1,392,000, done. Now some of you guys have like, but how do I know that the two fits in here? Because the last digit or the last thing you said was the place value of thousand, which implies the rest of those are zeros. The wonderful thing about math is that mathematicians are incredibly lazy. They want to write the least amount possible. They want to do things in the shortest way possible. So they like to condense things and have it kind of imply as to whether or not something is going to be present. So we have our number there. We have expanded format. And we have now gotten into the values. So I need to be able to look like, so I'm going to erase this. Don't worry. You're going to be seeing this a lot more. Um, I need to be able to use all this information that I just gave you and apply it to compare numbers. Now, some of you guys might be like, hey, um, why would I ever need to do that? That's really lame. Math is not my friend. Um, math was not my friend in school either. I did not actually really appreciate math 
until I got to be an adult. And then I just realized how important and useful it is. Not in the context of like doing math worksheets and all that stuff, but just using math on a daily basis. And this is something that we're gonna be learning that I end up using a lot. So let's say four, zero, one, two, four. And okay, we have two numbers up here and I'm going to actually read you the problem that this goes with. Canada's land area is about 4 million square miles. Iceland has a land area of about 40,000 square miles. Let's compare the two. So we're going to go ahead and it's said to put it on a place value chart. So I'm going to try and do that really quickly. Um, okay. And I'm just going to put the numbers up here because then I have to write less. Okay. So now we have our um, place value chart. Let me turn off the lights so you don't have as much glare. We have our place value chart. We have the two numbers put on there. This is something that you guys can get reasonably used to doing because we're going to be using the place value chart a bunch, especially at the beginning of the school year. So we now have it in our place value chart and we need to compare the numbers. How many more whole number place values does 4 million have than 40,000? How many more place values are in this top number compared to the bottom number? Show of phalanges or in chat. Austin's got it, good job, Austin. I see Gabe. Yeah, if you guys said two, two phalanges, or if you're in, in most other countries and you go two like that using your thumb, um, you are correct. There's one whole place value, two whole place values more. Okay. so. How many times greater would we say 4 million is than 40,000? How many times greater is 4 million than 40,000? Connor's got it. Good, good. If you guys are saying 100 times, you are correct. And let me show you the way I do this. I go start at my place value and I say, well, jump. One jump, that's times 10. Two jumps, times 10. I add those together. 10 times 10 is 100. So it is 100 times greater than the other number. So I could say that Canada's land area is 100 times greater than Iceland. But that's a huge difference, right? That is, that is the difference between a zero and 100. So that's a pretty significant difference. And I can compare it using just place value. Now, not only can I do that, but I can use this and rename these numbers in all sorts of different ways. So I'm gonna get rid of the 4 million because I'm gonna use 40,000 right now. Let's get rid of some of this, okay. So I want to rename this number. And when I rename it, I'm not gonna be like, and this is Bob, nice to meet you, Bob, speak Bob, right? That's not what I mean by rename, but I mean by right now, I'm saying four, zero, 40,000, right? I'm going over to a place value up and saying it's period. If I wanted to go over even more, I would be able to say, Let's do this one. I could go over, say I wanna read these three numbers. What number is underlined? 
what's that number that I have underlined? Yeah, if you guys are saying 400, you're correct. What place value does it end in? Ooh, in the hundreds. So it ends in the hundreds. So I could rename this 400 hundreds. And that means the exact same thing as 40,000. 40,000 and 400 hundreds is the same. Now, are you going go to go to Fry's and be like, could I have 400 hundreds? We're not playing Monopoly, right? So it's not going to be as applicable. Um, we have other ways. Now, let's say I wanted to expand this and I wanted to stop at this place value. Now I have 4,000 underlined and I stop in the tens place value. So I could rename this number as 4,000 tens, 4,000 tens. Or I could go even further, and this one is kind of redundant, but I could say 40,000 ones, um, 40,000 and 40,000 ones is implied, right? When you say a number in its whole, you're implying that you're counting by ones. Okay, I'm gonna pause. Whew. That's a lot of information. Who thinks they could do this on their own? Okay, so if some of you guys are saying you could, awesome. If some of you guys are like, oh my gosh, Mr. Monts is gonna let us get eaten by sharks and drowned, um, yes to a degree, but no, not totally yet. Because I want you guys to be able to tell me some cool things. Now, let's start with seven, eight, two, zero. Who can tell me what the value of that eight is? The value, not the place value, the value. I think. Say that again. 800. Yeah, perfect. 800. So it is an eight in the hundreds place value. So it is 800. That is the value. That is how much it's worth. Okay. So now let's take this number and put it in expanded form because we have a number. When we say a number, there's three ways we can do it. We have the number form. And we have the written form. If you guys have been typing like the word form of a number in chat, that's the word form. So that's the second way. The third way to do it is expanded form. So I'm gonna show you guys that again, because that might've been a little confusing. Let's start with my seven. In parentheses, I'm gonna put seven times, what do I need to apply, multiply seven by to get that value? What do you guys think? What do I need to multiply seven by to get the value of that number? If you're saying hundreds, we're one off. What place value are we are in? I think Connor and Alan said we're in the thousands place value. So we need to multiply it by 1,000. Now I'm going to my parentheses. Now I have to add. The next number, and Gabe already said that that is in a value of eight, so I have to multiply it by 100. Then I need to add what if value. What do I need to multiply that two by to get its value? Yeah, if you guys are saying 10, perfect. Now, do I need to add that? Could. I don't need to, though, because a 2 in the value is automatically going to imply that I have a 0 there because I have nothing else added to it. So now you guys might be like looking, wow, expanded format's really lame. It is. 
It is, but it's useful to get you guys to know the value of digits in a number. So in parentheses, you have each number. So seven, eight, two, right? Whole numbers right there. Multiplied by the place value that they are in. So that when I add it up, let's do this. Seven times 1,000 is 7,000. Plus eight times 100 is 800. Plus two times 10 is 20. So if I add 7,000 plus 800 plus 20, I get 7,000 plus 800 plus, oh, sorry, 20. And I should end with the exact same number that I started with. So expanded format, why would this be useful? Why do you guys think knowing this would be useful? Because yes, it does let you find the place value of whole numbers. It helps you hit that objective. But when you leave this Zoom meeting, when you leave class, why would you need this in any way? What do you guys think? What do you think? Sierra, what do you think? There's a reason I picked on you, Sierra. You should know. Um, Ooh, so close, but not quite, Sierra. Um is a great answer, but it's not quite there. The reason I picked on Sierra is because Sierra does barrel racing. Now, when she's doing barrel racing, they're going to time her. The fastest time in the competition wins. But competitions. Breaking it down like this, especially when you get to the fans, is really helpful for you to understand, is that time bigger or smaller than another one? So in timed competitions, this is going to be pretty helpful. So in a lot of sports or races, you're going to find value of those whole number place values to be very, very important. Um, so I already kind of dive, dove into it, but decimals will become insanely important in that too. Um, what do you guys think about sending a rocket to the moon? Do you think stuff like this would probably be pretty helpful? Yeah, definitely. Um, when I was a teenager, they sent a rover to Mars. And um, this one, oh, I'll be talking a lot more when we get to decimals but so here's the surface of mars and this rover is going to land and instead you're going to scroll down this thing just went boom and like drilled into the surface of mars um it was literally billions of dollars destroyed in an instant why one place value is wrong one place value. They had a decimal moved over one too far, so it, it thought the ground was like 100 feet low than it actually was. So understanding value, this, that dude, I'm pretty sure lost his job that day. I can't imagine um, you wasting a billion dollars and a year, years of work to send something to Mars destroyed in a moment like that. So this can be very, very important and useful in your daily life. Now, that being said, let's see if we can't try a couple more because that's the way we get better at math, not because we enjoy it necessarily, but because we practice. So let me see. Um, nom, nom. Where did I put my eraser? Math is incredibly helpful in art. Um, there is actually something called the golden ratio, which is used to describe, it is a mathematical ratio um, that describes the perfect picture. Full of thirds. Um, yeah, like the golden ratio is used to describe people who appear to be pretty to others works. Math in art is incredibly useful. 
Um, also, especially if you guys do any computer programming, uh, any art on computers, it's basic things of math that's represented in colors and pictures. Okay, now I've lost my erasers. There we go. All right. Let's see. I'm going to give you guys a number in expanded format, and I want the whole number in regular number format. Okay, our number in expanded form right now is 4 times 1 million plus 5 times 100 plus 6 times 10 plus 2 times 1. I want to know the number format of that. I'll give you guys a hint too. That's how many numbers it's going to have in it. If you guys have it, put it in chat. Oh wait, my bad. Alan, you're more right. I'm wrong. Not millions. Sorry guys, I'm trying to sabotage you already. <laughs> Okay, if you're looking at this and you're thinking, oh my goodness, I have absolutely no clue what I'm doing, don't worry, because I can see the look in your face. Some of you guys look like deer in the headlights. So let's put a four times 100,000 or 400,000. I apologize, I messed up and said it was in the millions. So I have a four in the hundred thousands. Do I have anything up here that makes me add 10,000? Nope, I see a couple of you guys shaking your head. Okay, do I have anything up here that shows me that I have anything in the thousands? Alan is still saying no. Do I have anything up here that shows me I have a digit in the hundreds? Yeah, I see a bunch of you guys shaking your head. Yes, five times 100 or 500. Do I have anything up here that shows me I have a digit in the tens? Yeah, six times 10 or 60. And then that leaves two times one, which is two. I have now worked backwards from expanded format to get 400,562. Now, just because I can, I'm gonna put that in written form. So written form would look like 400,000. 400,500 I'm going to drop down cuz I'm running out of space 562 I now have number format work I have the three major formats that I can express a number in. This is going to be helpful in a couple ways. Say you live in the year 2000 and you still write checks. You need to know how to write those. Say you live in any day that I've ever existed in my life, you need to know how to do that. Say you want to go to college and become an engineer, you need to know how to do that. So each of these has a place and a time that it's super useful. You just have to learn when to use it. Now, to be honest, most of them are going to be these two. This one will become much more useful once you get into algebra and things like that. Um, dealing with 
variables, all of that fun stuff. So it's mostly going to be these two bottom two, the word format and the number format that you guys are going to find to be the most useful. Now, you guys in breakout rooms, do we have any questions? No questions. Okay, cool. So I'm going to give you guys a three minute break, hit some water, stretch, and then we'll go into our breakout rooms, okay? So go get a snack, get some water, take a three minute break, and then we will go into the breakout rooms.